All right, so let's, what, what are some things to think about for problem number one <clears throat> on the test? Um, it's going to be an allowable stress design problem. Now, I apologize that for this problem, I didn't give you a factor of safety, but you know I'm probably going to say, hey, the, the, the yield stress is 100, you know, use a factor of safety of 2.5, right? So we to take that and divide it by 2.5 to get the allowable. Hey, the, the bearing stress, it, it, it yields at, you know, 50. Uh, so we would, we would take that factor of safety, divide it by, or take the stress, divide it by the factor of safety in order to, to get our allowable stresses. All right, so, you know, be, be able to, and be aware and be looking for that factor of safety uh, for these problems. Um, <clears throat> it's either going to be one like this and say, hey, here are all the forces. You can calculate all the forces, then, then tell me what's the diameter of the pin, what's the thickness of some member, something like that. Uh, or it's going to be, hey, here are the pins. The, I, you got to use these pins. These pins are this size. These are all the dimensions. But hey, what's the maximum force P? And so that might be a little bit harder in that you'll you'll do your statics and you'll be left with a P right inside of that statics. And then you'll come down here. And so it, it, it would look something like this. You might have a, a P up here, but you know the diameter, you know, so then you're just solving for the maximum force P. Also that one, you'd find the maximum force P that could, so that the pin wouldn't fail due to shear, the maximum force, so the pin wouldn't fail due to bearing, and you say, which one's the maximum force? Which one would you choose? You'd actually choose the smaller. It seems counterintuitive, but you would choose the smaller force and call that one the maximum force, you know, because it would, would fail uh, due to that smaller force before it gets to the larger force. Um, <clears throat> shear failure is V over A. If it's double shear, you take that V and divide it by 2. Right, if it's a double shear, you take that force and divide it by two. Um, single shear, you don't divide it by two. Uh, but for bearing, so a few things for bearing, you take that full force, never divide it by two, even if um, even if it's in double shear. And then the area for bearing failure, I don't know if I taught this well this semester or any semester, but the area for bearing failure is a rectangle as if you slice the pin right down the middle uh, and it would give you an area, a rectangle of diameter by thickness, whatever this thickness uh, of the that member, that middle member is. Uh, so thickness times diameter, it's a rectangle. Don't remember, it's not a, it's not a circle. The area that the bearing force, bearing stress acts over but you got to test all the failure modes, all the different ways it might fail uh, to earn full credit. Um, <clears throat> and then choose, figure out which, which one is the limiting factor, which one is it, where is it going to fail first? Um, and so, you know, that would be your answer. So for these problems where you find the diameters, the smallest diameter that you can use is the larger of the two, right? The smallest diameter you can use is the larger of the two. For those other problems, the maximum force that can be applied is the smaller of any of the forces that you've calculated, okay?